How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Detroit Lions franchise here on Madden 22. My name is Football Fan Forever and it is week 8 as we face off against the Minnesota Vikings for the second time this season. The Lions saw their surprise six game winning streak to start the season snapped last week against the Cowboys in a game which our defense was repeatedly shredded. We gave up over 500 yards of total offense to Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott in our defense's worst outing in this entire series. Our margin of victory over the Vikings back in week 4 was just one point. So if we're going to come away with a victory here today, our defense is going to have to play better. Adding to our challenge this week is the fact that starting cornerback Amani Owarie is missing another game, this time with a high ankle sprain. So he will be out against the dangerous duo of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, and we'll look to the likes of Ifatu Melifanwu to step up into his place. We might have caught a break, however, as we're not the only team dealing with injuries. Dalvin Cook has an upper arm fracture that will keep him out at least one week beyond this one. So at least we won't have to deal with the versatile superstar running back this week. Instead, we'll direct our efforts towards trying to slow down Alexander Madison. Madison has more of a between-the-tackles running style, which is good news for us because that funnels him right towards D'Angelo Carmichael, who has superstar development. I totally forgot to show this to you guys last episode, but we did learn D'Angelo Carmichael's development trait, so we know that he is able to back up his play on the field with his development off of it. I think he's going to be a very special player for us by the end of the series. But that's enough pregame stuff, let's get into today's matchup. We are on the road here in Minnesota and we will receive the ball first. Here we go. Week 8 is underway and we are in our color rush uniforms as this is a Thursday night football game. And Keegan Darby's opening kickoff return is a little bit of a clunker as he is stopped at the 20 yard line. Which is where Bob Harrison in this offense will take over. Harrison nearly led a comeback last week and collected NFC Offensive Player of the Week award for his four touchdown performance against the Cowboys. He will start the day in the shotgun first and 10 on his own 20. Play action to DeAndre Swift and Harrison will fire down field for TJ Hawkinson who is stopped just shy of the marker for a gain of nine. Hawkinson was our leading receiver last week. And he gets the first catch in today's game. Now second and inches from the 30. Jamal Williams along with Jason Kabinda are in the game. And Williams will bowl his way ahead for a gain of seven. It's rookie J.J. Dunlap in the game on second and four. Just one play later. He will try the right side and pick up about two yards before he's taken down by Anthony Barr. That will make it third and two. And Jamal Williams will once again check into the game. Minnesota is stacking the box. Dexter Allen changing sides of formation from right to left. Harrison under center. He will hand off to Williams who will once again fight his way forward through contact to the 49-yard line. Nothing too flashy to start the day for the Lions. First and 10 right at midfield. Swift in the game. Harrison back to pass. Sets his feet. Fires over the middle. And he's intercepted. It's Steven Harrison. The rookie corner out of Memphis. Returning this one to the Detroit 44. And this is just a nice play by Harrison. With the speed to get around Quintez Cephas. And jump the route there. So Kirk Cousins and this Minnesota offense. Will start with excellent field position. Eight touchdowns, just two interceptions for Cousins on the season. He's hardly been as productive as the Vikings would like. And on second and three, he will go under center. Play action. Time for Cousins. There's Irv Smith. And there is touchdown pass number nine. So it takes just two plays for the Vikings to capitalize on the Bob Harrison interception. They lead 7 to nothing after a 38-yard touchdown pass. Irv Smith on Sean Dean Hamilton. That is a matchup the Vikings will take every single time. So a tough start for both sides of the ball here for the Lions. 
facing a second and nine on their own 30. Deshaun Stevenson in motion. Harrison just gets this one away and Stevenson doesn't have a lot of room. Gain of maybe four there and it's third down. Harrison in the shotgun, swift to his right through wide receivers, but no time for Harrison to throw as Michael Pierce blasts him back at the 27-yard line. He made a really nice play to jump over Halapulivati Vaitsai and bring down Harrison as Minnesota is off to a really strong start here. Up 7-0 with a chance to make it a two-score game. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Cousins, three-step drop, time to throw. And he's got all day to find a wide open Justin Jefferson for a gain of 25. So already two big plays given up by this Detroit pass defense. They will switch to a 3-3-5 look here on second down. And Madison will try the left side, bouncing off of Will Harris. He's brought down after a gain of 14 as the Vikings are now on the edge of field goal range here first and 10. We gave up a lot of yards after contact last week as Cousins stands tall in the pocket firing over the middle as Madison shakes through a tackle picking up five yards and that will lead to a third and four. Cousins in the shotgun Madison to his left blitz is brought it's picked up Cousins under pressure will not find Amir Smith Marset and that will bring out the field goal unit Quinn Norton missed a pair of field goals in week four but he is good from 47 yards to make it 10 nothing Minnesota so the Lions first two drives ended with an interception and a sack they have just 27 total yards and most of those have come on the ground. First and 10, DeAndre Swift with a lane. He will pick up a first down and more to the 41-yard line. It's a gain of 15 and a first down for the Lions. Nicholas Harper is getting the start at wide receiver here today over Amon Ra St. Brown as TJ Hawkinson will take the short pass from Hairston and pick up another Lions first down. Bunch formation on the right side at second and four. Harrison in the shotgun against a four-man rush. And the quick throw, there's Quintez Cephas underneath. And now Detroit is putting together a nice little drive on their offense's third possession. After an incomplete pass, it is second and ten for Bob Harrison. He's in the shotgun and he will hand off to fellow rookie Deshaun Stevenson. There's a gain of eight to make it a very manageable third and two. And Harrison will stay in the shotgun here through wide receivers to the left. And a quick throw over the middle. There is Nicholas Harper with a nice grab in front of Eric Kendricks. The Lions needed two and they got three. Which will set them up inside the red zone. Facing another second and ten. Harrison drifting way back. Firing over the middle. There's TJ Hawkinson down to the eight. Third and inches. And Jamal Williams, our short yarded specialist, will come into the game Following Jason Cabinda up the middle, he runs into Dallin Tomlinson, but not before we pick up the first down. Goal to go Detroit at the beginning of the second quarter. J.J. Dunlap in the game on second and goal. Harrison with time, he fires to Christian Kirk, who is all alone in the back of the end zone for his fifth touchdown catch of the season. And Detroit is on the board. It's a 12-play, 74-yard drive capped off with a 6-yard touchdown pass to Christian Kirk as that drive will hopefully go a long way in exercising the demons of the first two. But now it's up to the defense to try and get some stops here. Minnesota scored points on their first two possessions and Alexander Madison has proven difficult to bring down on first contact. The real test, however, will be trying to defend the likes of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. As well as Irv Smith, who's already caught a touchdown pass here today. And moves the sticks for another Minnesota first down with a short catch and run. That will make it first and ten right around midfield. Madison getting the ball, but Alex Anzalone makes a nice play on him there to force a third and nine. Bunch formation on the left side for Cousins. He's back to pass. Quick throw over the middle. That is caught by Smith Marset. But Carmichael and Walker are there to force the punt as Detroit's defense will get a stop. 
Harrison will go under center on second and five. It's a delayed give to DeAndre Swift, and there's Dalvin Tomlinson again making a nice play for a loss. Third and six. Pretty tight formation here for the Lions. They're facing the Mike Zimmer double-A gap. Look, here comes Daniil Hunter, but Harrison gets it away, and Deshaun Stevenson picks up 11 hard-earned yards. And this is a really difficult throw, and pretty much the only option Harrison had with Hunter bearing down on him, he gets the ball to his rookie running back who picks up the big conversion. And that will allow the drive to continue and Jamal Williams to continue picking up hard-earned yards. 18 yards on four carries for the veteran running back who is in a contract year. And on first and ten, Bob Harrison rolling out will fire downfield to Christian Kirk who has it in Minnesota territory to the 31. I think Harrison is at his best off of play action and having a thriving running game will certainly help with that. Now Deshaun Stevenson checks into the game. They'll toss it to the left side and this is in trouble. Right off the bat, Melvin Goodrich meeting him in the backfield for a loss of four. And that will make it second and 14. It's another double A gap look for the Vikings. This time DeAndre Swift is in to protect. Two high safeties for the Vikings as they rush just four. Harrison with time takes a shot. Hawkinson, touchdown! And just like that, the Lions are on top. A 36-yard touchdown pass to TJ Hawkinson. As this is about as close of a completion as you could ask for. Look at how close Xavier Woods was to defending that pass. It wasn't placed perfectly, but it was put where only Hawkinson could catch it. As we go 81 yards down the field to take a 14 to 10 lead and suddenly the momentum is on Detroit's side. First and 10, Cousins off the hands of Amir Smith-Marset and that will lead to another third and long for the Vikings. Here comes a blitz, it's picked up and Justin Jefferson makes the athletic grab at the 43. He was matched up against D'Angelo Carmichael, which the Vikings will take every single time. And it's first and ten Minnesota. I don't think there's a middle linebacker in the league who can slow down Justin Jefferson. As the Vikings continue their balanced approach with another handoff to Alexander Madison. Madison is alone back on first and ten. Detroit stacks the box and Madison finds a hole across the 30 inside the 20. He is tackled by Will Harris at the 19. With D'Angelo Carmichael on the sideline, the Vikings take advantage and now they are inside the red zone here. Second and six at the two minute warning. Cousins in the shotgun. He's back to pass against a four man rush. Time running out. He will fire this one out of bounds in the direction of Madison. Third and six. Cousins under center on third down. Three step drop. Quick slant to Thielen and that is a touchdown for the Vikings. The Lions sent the blitz and Minnesota made them pay as the veteran wide receiver gets behind Sean Francois and fights his way in for six. Minnesota is back on top with less than two minutes to go here in the first half. So it's first and 15 for the Lions after a false start penalty. Harrison stepping up in the pocket finds Cephas who somehow hangs on to that one and turns it into a gain of nine. And all Harrison can do is shake his head. Look at what Quintez Cephas is able to do with Stephen Harrison all over him. He makes one of the best catches you will see and manages to keep his balance, turning something out of nothing, and it's second and six. Dexter Allen in the game as Harrison drifts back and to his left, and he'll fire short to Nicholas Harper, who ducks out of bounds at the 38, stopping the clock once again. Two deep safeties for the Vikings on second and two there in press coverage. Harrison from the shotgun takes his shot downfield. Kirk with a step. He will have it inside the 20 at the 18. It's a 37-yard connection from Bob Harrison to Christian Kirk. And Harrison knew where this ball was going as soon as he saw Kirk win off the snap. The Vikings were in cover one, so there was no safety help over the top. 
So the Lions get a big play to put them inside the red zone with just over a minute 20 to go. And on first and 10, Quintus Cephas has another grab inside the 10, down to the 6. First and goal, Detroit. And they still have two timeouts with which to work. DeAndre Swift in the game on first and goal. He'll try the left side, and Dalvin Tomlinson brings him down at the 2, second and goal. Jamal Williams in the game. Williams again trying the left side. And Harrison Smith catches up to him around the edge. What a play by the veteran safety. And it's third and goal. Spreading out the field. It's a design run. Harrison is down at the one. And Detroit will take another look at this here. As it looks like Harrison's knee is down at this point. Right before... He stretches the ball over the plane. So despite the fact that the Lions have been pretty successful on their fourth down conversions thus far this season, they send out the field goal unit to at least get some points on the board for sure and head into halftime tied at 17 with Minnesota. So we've got some good back and forth football going here in Minneapolis as both teams are averaging over 7 yards per play. Detroit's defense hasn't been great here today, but they have made a couple of stops and have kept us in the game, while our offense overcame a slow start to put up 17 points in the second quarter. A big part of that offensive turnaround has been the play of quarterback Bob Hairston. Since he was sacked to end our second possession, he's gone 13 of 15 for 186 yards and two touchdowns. So we'll see if he can keep that momentum going here in the second half. But Minnesota will start with the football. And Alexander Madison has been nothing short of brilliant for the Vikings. 10 carries, 77 yards on the day. As Kirk Cousins heads to the air on second and seven. And that is another pass off the hands of Amir Smith-Marset. Third down. Cousins in the shotgun. Madison to his right. Four-man rush. Cousins with time, now retreating, fires, there's a wide open Madison, and he stiff arms James Winter before he's hauled down by Alex Anzalone at the 46. Madison is doing it all here today for the Vikings, stepping in for Dalvin Cook, you see him getting involved there in the pass game, and they go right back to him on second down, and he will pick up another Minnesota first down. Ball on the 39, now bunch formation on the left side. Cousins with a deep drop, quick throw, and there is Jefferson inside the 35, down to the 33 as Minnesota moves the sticks again. It's been a pretty quiet day for Justin Jefferson so far. As Cousins heads to the air on first and 10, there's a quick throw to his tight end, Irv Smith, but that won't get much and will lead to a third and seven. And the Vikings will throw for it. Pretty good coverage downfield. And Devin Woodson will sack Kirk Cousins for his ninth sack of the season. And this is likely a play that Cousins will want back as Justin Jefferson had plenty of separation from Sean Francois here on this play. He's alone in the back of the end zone. That would have been an easy touchdown. Instead, it's a 56-yard attempt for Quinn Norden, who missed twice from 50 back in Week 4. And the third time is not a charm, as kicking problems continue to plague the Minnesota Vikings. Stop me if you've heard that one before. And the Lions will take over with excellent field position here in this third quarter. It's second and seven from midfield. Jet sweep for Keegan Darby looking for the edge. He takes a big hit but picks up the first down. And Detroit is into Minnesota territory. On second and three, play action to Dunlap. Quick throw to Cephas who makes another nice grab in traffic. And it's first and ten Detroit at the 27. DeAndre Swift checks in, Hawkinson in motion, he is thrown aside by Dalvin Tomlinson as our running game has been inconsistent to start the second half. Third and six, Harrison in the shotgun. Against a four-man rush, he steps up, the pocket collapses, Harrison will take off and he will stretch ahead for the first down. And it's not often that we see Harrison leave the pocket but he's able to pick up the first down with his legs and keep the drive alive. 
Now facing a second and five from the 12. Lions trying to take the lead. Hairston to the left side and Christian Kirk climbs the ladder. Goal to go Detroit from the four. And Jamal Williams checks in alongside Jason Kabinda. They'll try the right side and Williams is in for the touchdown. So the Lions are on top thanks to a four-yard plunge from Jamal Williams. And that was a really nice push from the right and center sides of our line. Both guards and Frank Ragnow putting in yeoman's work to ensure that Jamal Williams had a path to the end zone. And the veteran running back just put his shoulder down and did the rest. So it's 24-17 in favor of the Lions. Cousins back to pass. He will find Smith Marset across the 40 to the 42. As the young wide receiver has collected a lot more of Kirk Cousins' targets than Justin Jefferson or Adam Thielen. Now play action. There is Smith Marset wide open down the field to the 32 of Detroit. Minnesota is very much in this one as they've been able to get some chunk plays here against our defense. First and 10 from the 32. Madison to his left. Cousins in the shotgun. RPO and Cousins will tuck and run. He's in trouble. He breaks a tackle. Now he stiff arms a man. And that's got to be the most impressive run you've seen from a 30 plus year old quarterback. Look at this. First he gets away from Romeo Okwara, then he makes rookie James Winter regret his life decisions. That's going to be on highlight reels all week as Captain Kirk breaks off one of the more impressive quarterback runs that you will ever see. Now he'll hand it to Madison who's got a lane and a first down. And Ezra Cleveland is shaken up on this play, but he'll only miss a couple of plays here for the Vikings as it is first and ten, now second and eight. Minnesota trying to tie this one up. The fullback C.J. Ham in the game along with Madison. They'll try Madison to the left side and he is wrapped up. Strong tackle by Sean Dean Hamilton at the 5. Third and 5 as the Vikings can convert without scoring a touchdown. Last play of the third quarter. Cousins under pressure throws this one away. And once again, he's going to hear it from his wide receivers on the sideline. This time it'll be from Adam Thielen, who is one of two Minnesota wide receivers wide open in the back of the end zone. But as we head to the fourth quarter, it is a 24-17 game in favor of the Lions. And Mike Zimmer is going to keep his offense on the field. They've got a lot of weapons for Cousins. And he will head to the air, pocket collapsing, firing to the end zone. But double coverage on Adam Thielen will knock the ball out. As Sean Francois and James Winter combine to make the play. And that will give Bob Hairston the ball once again. And he has been on fire since the rough start to this game. He's thrown for over 200 yards on 15 of 17 passing since taking the sack. And now he faces first and 10 on his own five yard line. Dexter Allen in at fullback, that's a choice as DeAndre Swift will pick up nine yards on first down. And the Lions will convert now second and six from their own 20. Plenty of breathing room and they'll head back to the ground game as DeAndre Swift runs through Anthony Barr for a gain of eight. So with less than eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, the Lions are going to try and drain as much clock as they can while adding to their one score lead. Here's a short pass to Nicholas Harper, which will pick up about 12 yards and the first down. As Harrison has, by and large, taken what the defense has given him. That approach has been successful, too. He's been very accurate and hasn't needed to challenge Minnesota's secondary, especially their two excellent safeties. And on second and 12, he'll dance around in the pocket before finding Nicholas Harper, who turns up field and takes the big hit before being tackled at the 40-yard line of Minnesota. First and 10, we're under seven minutes to go here. Detroit closing in on field goal range. And there's a nice slant route to Christian Kirk as Harrison read the blitz and knew right where he was going for that one. That is the fifth time he and Kirk have connected as we're now inside six minutes. 
Three tight ends on the field. Second and nine. Nice cut by DeAndre Swift, who's inside the 15, down to the 12. The clock will continue to run as Detroit inches closer to adding to their lead. First and 10 from the 12. Clock right around five minutes. Hand off to the shifty Deshaun Stevenson, who weaves his way down to the five. It's a gain of eight, and that will lead to a third and two. Bunch formation on the right side. Harrison against the blitz. Unblocked defender. Harrison just gets this one away. As the Lions will send out the field goal unit to make it a 10-point game with just over four minutes to go. As Cousins reassures his star wide receiver that he might be looking his direction more often here with the game on the line. First and ten. Cousins back to pass. Throw to the left side. There's another catch for smith Marset. But it will be shy of the marker, second and three. The Lions in their base defense here on second down as C.J. Ham is in the game. And Madison with plenty of room up the left sideline. Tackled out of bounds by Jeff Oduka. It's a gain of 25 for the young running back. And that will put Minnesota with better field position here. That's a big play they needed. Now second and seven. Cousins. Fires short to Smith, who will break a tackle to the 30-yard line of Detroit. Still on the right side of the two-minute warning, Minnesota with three timeouts. They would like a quick score here, but that pass will go off the hands of smith Marset. That's his third or fourth drop at this point in the game. As Minnesota will face a third down conversion here. Quick throw to the left side. There's Adam Thielen down to the 10. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. And I can't be the only one wondering what this game would be like if Thielen and Jefferson were regularly targeted as part of the Vikings game plan today. It's first and goal, Minnesota. Cousins out of the split shotgun here. Facing just a four-man rush. He's got time. Fires to a wide-open Keeney Wangu. And it's a touchdown for the Vikings as they pull within three here with a minute 57 to go. D'Angelo Carmichael was assigned to cover Wangu in man coverage, but that's not a fair matchup, and Carmichael was left in the dust. As Minnesota will trust their defense to get a stop here, as Keegan Darby will get a chance to return this one. From a couple yards deep, he'll cross the 25, and he's tackled at the 27, as the Lions will try and get the couple first downs that they need to end this one. First and 10 from their own 27. Heavy formation. Jamal Williams to the right side. He breaks a tackle. Gets a block. Hits the gas. Williams. 30. 20. 10. Touchdown. So forget running down the clock. Jamal Williams says, let's take it 73 yards to the house. As it takes the Lions just one play to effectively ice this game as it's now a 10-point lead with a minute 43 to go here in Minneapolis. So the Vikings will need a very quick score here if they want to get back into this one. They have all three timeouts, but time is not on their side. Cousins heading back to the air over the middle, and there is another drop for Amir smith Marset. That is five on the day for the young wide receiver. And the Vikings will face a third and four here. Quick throw to the left side, nearly intercepted. And the Vikings will have no choice but to go for it on fourth down. Cousins back to pass. Fires downfield for Jefferson, who can't haul that one in through very good coverage from Sean Francois, who did give up a touchdown earlier, but makes a nice play on Justin Jefferson here to force the incompletion. As the Lions end up winning this one 41 to 24. We did add another touchdown at the end of this one. It was kind of by accident. But the offense was really moving the ball well here today. Averaging 7.8 yards per play. I don't know why it says we had two turnovers because there was only one. We had a fumble that was overturned that didn't make it into the final cut here. And I guess that still counts as a turnover according to Madden. But I'm not going to get too hung up on that as our offense had a really great day after the rough start. I talked about this a couple times, but Bob Harrison was on fire in the last three quarters of this game. 
He went 18 of 21 for 248 yards and two touchdowns after our second possession, at one point completing 15 passes in a row. A couple of those completions were really nice catches by our wide receivers, but still, he was very accurate. He made throws under pressure. We had guys getting open. It was a really good day for our passing offense. Not to be outdone, we also collected 256 yards on the ground. The highlight obviously being that 73-yard touchdown run by Jamal Williams, which is the longest play from scrimmage that we've had this season. I'd personally mark this one down as one of the most inspiring offensive performances we've had in the series. Because, when combined with last week's comeback that fell just short, points to an offense that is potentially able to put it all together for nearly a full 60 minutes of football. And while I'm not convinced that we're as good as our 7-1 record indicates that we might be, if we're able to overcome the slow starts that have plagued our offense the last couple weeks, we could be a very tough draw when the playoffs start later on this season. And barring an epic late season collapse, that's where we're headed in Season 2 of our rebuild. Now I know I've said this already before in a couple other videos, but this season has really surprised me with how well it's gone. I don't think we have made that many changes from last season in terms of our personnel, and while the playbook is certainly helpful, we struggled to win one game last season. Fast forward to this year and it took a nearly perfect offensive effort by the Cowboys to beat us by three points. Whatever the case may be, we might be a lot further along in this rebuild than I anticipated at this point in the series. I don't necessarily think that we are ready to contend for a Super Bowl here in Season 2, but I can easily see us making the playoffs as we probably only need three or four more wins over the second half of the season here in order to make it to the playoffs. We are far from a perfect team, and I still have a lot of concerns with our defense heading into the second half of the season, but this team has won seven of its first eight games for a reason, so I decided to stand pat at the trade deadline and look to address some of the weaker areas on our roster with players that are already on the team. Some of that process started here today as wide receiver Nicholas Harper and free safety James Winter both got some extended looks on the field. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll be going over this roster and seeing if there are areas where we can get players into skill-specific positions. Someone like Trey Flowers is a really solid run stopper, but hasn't been very effective as a pass rusher here this season. And he's been taking away snaps from guys like Jabari Zuniga and Julian Okwara, who really should get another look as edge rushers. Likewise, Amani Ouarie has had a difficult season at cornerback across from Jeff Ojuka, so I'm going to try Ifatu Melifanmu at his cornerback spot next week. Someone like James Winter just needs more playing time so we can continue to get him upgrades. And I also want to get Deshaun Stevenson and JJ Dunlap the ball more to see what we have in them as running backs. As next week, we will take on the New York Giants who are off to a 5-2 and two start to their season, and it's not hard to see why. They have Saquon Barkley, one of the best young running backs in the league, toting the rock for them. He's been excellent for the Giants this season, and he's someone who can take over a game for a team. They also have Evan Engram, who is a matchup nightmare that I don't know how we're going to cover. But perhaps most importantly, their front office selected Landry Jackson in the draft. They traded up to number one overall and did not miss on that pick. He has superstar development and is already a very solid offensive lineman. Well deserving of the number one overall pick as he has kept Daniel Jones upright this season. But even without Landry Jackson, I'd still think that this would be a very tough matchup for us. The Giants have a superstar running back, which we've had problems against. They have a superstar tight end, which we have struggled against. And a low-rated quarterback, which I predict we're going to struggle against. But that is all for today's episode. Thanks for watching. This is actually video number 100 on my channel, so thank you for being part of this journey. 
I couldn't have done it without you. So take care, everybody, and I will catch you next time.